Happy Mother's Day. Or as we have for a few years now at the CLF like to celebrate it, Mama's Day. Mama's Day is a holiday to honor all of the people who are mothers in ways that our society tends not to honor. Poor mothers, mothers of color, disabled mothers, lesbian mothers, transgender mothers, mothers by adoption, mothers who place their children for adoption, foster mothers, all of those kinds of mothers, mamas, who might get the attitude from society that their being a mother was somehow a mistake. Because it matters to say no. Your being a mother is not a mistake. Who you are is good enough. Because it seems to me it's also a good time to honor the mothers who make mistakes which, as far as I know, is all of us. But there's one more kind of mothering and mistakes that haunts me. That's the mothers who suspect very quietly, deep down in the bottoms of their hearts, that maybe for them mothering is a mistake. That's not so easy to talk about, especially if that person might just be you. I'm not somebody who grew up always wanting to be a mom. I'm not somebody who as an adult really thought, gee, I can't wait until I have kids. I had a wife whom I adored who really wanted to have a child, who specifically wanted to have a child through adoption and I'm not the kind of person who likes to stand in the way of someone I love fulfilling their heart's desire, their soul's deep longing. And so I thought, and I thought, and I read, and I looked, and everywhere I encountered this message that said that the moment they placed that child in your arms, be it biological or adopted, you fall massively deeply, head over heels, in love. And so, I said yes. And about a year later, the head of the adoption agency placed this tiny, beautiful bundle of baby in my arms, and I looked down at her adorable little face, and that crashing, magical wave of adoration didn't happen. It didn't happen. Now, my daughter is 16 and a half now, and I do love her in much the same way that she loves me, with the kind of affection between two people who, as my daughter has described it, have absolutely nothing in common. There's a myth that's common in the adoption community that God or the universe or whatever always sends you just the right child, just the perfect being you needed in your life. Now, I don't know whether my daughter's particular guardian angel, fairy godmother, was on vacation that day or not, but I wonder whether we got the right match. I wonder whether she might not be better off in some family with a better fashion sense and less attachment to good grades. I don't know that we were meant for each other. I don't know that I was meant to be a parent at all. I don't know if I'm doing a good enough job in spite of my feelings and I don't know whether the whole thing might really have been a mistake. And there is no way to know. There's no way to go back to some point in your life and say, well, if I had gone down this road instead, then everything would have turned out perfect. What's perfect? 
There is no perfect, there's only different. Who knows? Who could say what would have been better? What would have been the great mistake? There's no way to know. All I know is what I tell myself in my moments of guilt and shame over not being the kind of parent that I think I should be, the kind of parent that it seems like parents really are. There is love. There is a choice to love. And it's not easy to build love on the foundation of commitment rather than building commitment on a foundation of love. It's not easy, but it is possible to just go right on ahead and choose love day by day, not just because it's that crashing wave of emotion and connection and adoration, but because it is the kind of love that you choose. And I have to believe somehow deep down in my heart that any path that involves choosing love, however falteringly, however even feebly, any choice that involves choosing over and over again the path of love can't really entirely be a mistake.